and the second verse. Don't worry, you're going to have Bible class. You ain't that much in love with the Word. Because if you is, you'll be living holy. All right, okay, all right, good, all right. Well, we're going we're gonna to teach. Don't worry. There's a long lesson here tonight. I understand we got the Christmas play on Friday. If I don't finish tonight, it will have to be a part two on next Wednesday. But I have to bring this lesson out tonight that God gave me Monday night. Um, amen. It got something to do with your faith in the word of God. Um, amen. If your faith is not in the word of God or don't trust God at his word, then you got some serious problems. You're going to have some serious problems. All right, let's go into the lesson tonight, Hebrews 4 and 2. I want you to read that for me, honey. Hebrews 4 um, and 2. For unto us was the gospel For unto us, who is us? Us. Even though Paul was referring to them back then, but it still goes for us, we're still human. God is still God. All right, for unto us. Was the gospel preached? All right, read for me, honey. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. All right, as well as unto them. Who is them? Israel. He relating in the time of Israel, in the time of us. All right. Same gospel. Go ahead. Different generation. Yeah. Different people. Yeah, yeah. Same gospel. Yeah. Saying God son. All right, say that. that is All it. right, read for me, honey. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith, and them that heard. Now, before I go into this lesson, let me break down the introduction of this lesson on tonight. Now, first of all, here, we must understand, and we know this, that God gave Israel the prophets. He gave Israel the laws. God gave Israel the judges. And God gave Israel the word of God. And they still failed God. I mean, how can Israel fail God and God gave them all of this? The prophets, the judges, Moses, the laws. The word of God. God gave them everything to work with. God gave them everything to be holy. God gave them everything to be in right standard. And they still failed God. God gave Israel the law, the prophets, and the word of God. And they still didn't make it to the promised land. Do you see what I'm talking about? The word that God sent by Moses and the prophets, the Bible said it didn't profit them. And the reason why that we know it didn't profit them, they didn't make it to the promised land. Uh, God destroyed a lot of them. You see what I'm talking about? It didn't help them. The word that God sent them didn't help them. The promise that God sent them didn't help them. Why it didn't help them? They didn't believe. Simple. They didn't believe God's promise. They didn't believe the word of God. They turned a deaf ear to the law because they was in unbelief. But it was their unbelief that destroyed them. That's what we're going to be bringing out later on. It was their unbelief that kept them out the promised land the Bible states plainly, God swore in his wrath they would not enter in because of unbelief. That's the word. That's what he said. Go ahead, teach uh -huh. Do you see what I'm talking about? Amen. 
The Bible said, and the Bible is telling us right here that this is a warning to us that we must beware of unbelief. When we hear the prophets, when we hear the word of God, we have to beware of unbelief because the Bible is telling us that Israel heard the same word that didn't make it in. They heard the same word got destroyed still. What the sense of God giving them the prophet and then they weren't going to believe the prophet? What the sense of God giving them Moses and they didn't believe in Moses? What the sense of God giving them the word of God and they didn't believe in the word of God? Do you see what I'm talking about? Amen. The Bible is telling us that we hearing the same word that Israel heard and the same devil that had them in unbelief is the same devil that got some of us in unbelief today. Let me explain something to you here, honey. You got many people is hearing the word of God in unbelief. They faithful in coming to Bible class. They faithful in reading their Bible. They faithful in listening to everybody come on the TV and preach it, but they still in unbelief. The word is not proper than them. You see what I'm talking about? They don't believe the word of God. They don't believe the prophet. See. It's not going to do you no good for me to pray for you and you don't believe what I preach. God going to put his word above my prayers and yours too. You see what I'm talking about? Listen, you got many people, baby. Quick to say, prophet, pray for me. That's good. But you should be quick enough to receive what the prophet is preaching. You see what I'm talking about? Amen. If the word of God is not profiting you, amen, I have nothing to do with that. I'm telling you. That got something to do with you. That got something to do with your unbelief. That got something to do with your heart. That got something to do with you. The word doing me good. Can't you see it? The word is doing me good, baby. Yeah, yes it is. Keeping me in good health. Yes, yes. Keeping me with a sound mind. Oh, yeah. Keeping me strong. Yes, keeping me victorious. Yes, the yes. word doing me good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. If the word of God is not profiting you, the problem is you. It's not the church. It's not the pastor. The, the problem is you. You have unbelief somewhere. It don't make no difference to come out every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday to hear the prophet. The Pharisees came out every week and heard Jesus and were still in unbelief. The peoples practically lived it with Moses in the wilderness still was in unbelief. You see what I'm talking about? This is why him, you got many people, is him the word in unbelief. You can tell, that's why there's no repentance after they hear the word. There's no correction after they hear the word. If you accept the word in faith, in believing that God spoke this through the prophet, in believing that God said this, that will be repentance and correction. But 
If you doesn't believe the word of God that the prophet preached, you will ignore it. You will not correct it because what you just did here, whatever the prophet said, you heard it in unbelief. And you can look at that, look at the response of it. Look at the works behind it. Any man that accepts the word of God in faith, amen, they have works of repentance, works of correcting it, baby. I was reading here in 2 Corinthians when Paul wrote to the Corinthian church. Go ahead. Paul said that uh, I'm glad that you repented after a God. I, he said, although that I, I didn't want you to be sorrow, but that's good uh -huh. because your sorrow led you to repentance. <laughs> now, let me say this here, here honey. This what you got to look at. How it, I understand you in Bible class, but how's you receive it while you're here? God not going to grade you on how many times you come. He's going to grade how much you put faith in the word that you heard. The Bible said much is given, much is required. It didn't say much as you came to church, much is required. You see what I'm talking about? Amen. You got many peoples that's in the word of God in unbelief. This is why the word is not profiting them. This is why they not get delivered. This is why they not getting healed. This is why they not getting saved. The unbelief is in them. They don't believe. Let me explain something to you, baby. I have took this word, the word that my pastor preached to me through the Holy Ghost, the word that God gave me, baby, the word that I received out the word of God, put the devil away from him, kept me in good health, kept me with a sound man. Why is it working for me then? Because I have faith in it. Why is it here? The word of God is not working for some people. They don't have faith in it. They, they, they come into church looking more at man than what the spirit of God is speaking through man. You see what I'm talking about? Do you see what I'm talking about? This is why I hear that there's no spiritual growth after many people hear the word of God because they don't believe it. You see what I'm talking about? That's why there's no deliverance after they hear the word of God because they hear the word of God in unbelief. Now, let me explain something to you here, honey. Hearing the word of God in unbelief causes you to be stubborn. That's what brings stubbornness hidden in unbelief. Look, I look in the book of Exodus, Deuteronomy, I see why they spoke against Moses. I see why that they did not accept the word of God that Moses told them. Amen. They were stubborn. Why was they stubborn? Unbelief made them stubborn. You see what I'm talking about? Stubbornness come from unbelief. Do you see what I'm talking about? Hearing the word of God in unbelief Cause you to ignore it. You can tell through your works. When you have heard 
the word of God in unbelief. If you heard the word of God in unbelief, you're going to ignore it. You're not going to correct it. You're not going to repent. Did they hear it? Yes. Did they believe it? No. Why? Look at the word. Hold it up, baby. Not only that, there's no godly sorrow. Prophet, I got sorrow. If you got sorrow, what did Paul tell the church? Your godly sorrow would have worked you to repentance, not to be repented of. That's what the word said. Didn't the Bible say that godly sorrow worked in repentance? You can only become godly sorrow Go ahead now. if you believe the word. Yeah, yeah, sure. If you believe what the men of God say. Yeah, yeah. Once you get godly sorrow because of what you believe in, Go your godly sorrow is going to lead you into repentance. Good job, good job. After your godly sorrow leads you into repentance, when you get through repenting, you're going to correct it. Yeah. Do you see what I'm talking about? Now this is what I want to bring to the church and to the streamline. Now, you got to look at it like this. The same unbelief that kept Israel out the promised land will be the same unbelief you got will keep you out of heaven. Hold it. Let me ask you a question. Why didn't Israel go in the promised land? The Bible states plainly because of unbelief. God swore in his wrath that they would not enter in because of unbelief. God, Paul mentioned that in Hebrews 12 different times. Show you how serious it is. You see what I'm talking about? Amen. The same unbelief that kept Israel out of the promised land. It wasn't no adultery. Wasn't no murder. Wasn't no stealing. They didn't believe the man of God. They didn't believe the word of God. That's what kept them out. God stated that because they didn't believe. I swear they would not enter into my rest. This is why I'm telling you all. We say by faith. Amen. The just shall live by faith. That's what the word says. Hold it up, baby. Faith in what? Faith in the word of God. Prophet, I'm saved because I got faith in Jesus. Jesus is the word. Let me explain something to you here, honey. If any man is hearing God's word in unbelief, that man is on his way to hell. You see what I'm talking about? You cannot look at the words you say. Probably you preach a good message. Probably you right. You don't look at that, baby. You look at after the prophet done preached to you how you correct it, how you repent. That's what you look at. That will show God whether you believe or not. Look, I can say many things with my mouth but don't have no works to back me up. I can say many things with my mouth. You could preach something, Pastor. I can say, Pastor, you right. Amen. Uh, you right. What you said is the truth. And walk away. Don't repent. And don't cor correct the matter. What I just said would not stand before God. 
what I did is only going to stand before God. This is why the Bible told us in the book of James, uh -huh. be not heals of the word, uh -huh. only deceiving ourselves. That's what it said. We have to be doers of the word. Oh, yeah. That's word. Only way that we could be doers of the word, we have to have faith in it. Oh, yeah. That's true. We have to believe that God said it. Hey. We have to believe that God is speaking it. You see what I'm talking about? If we doesn't believe that God said it or God spoke it, amen, we, we're going to ignore it. Yeah, that is so true. We're going to walk away, not repent. Yeah, yeah. We're going to walk away, not godly sorrow. Uh -huh. We're going to walk away, not correcting the matter. That is so true, teacher. Mm. You're right. And still going to say we save until God judge you. Until God judge your work, until God judge the counsel of your heart. Look, if you telling me uh, that if you telling me that you believe, Amen. Where's the works at? You yeah, see what I'm talking about? Amen. If you tell me that you believe, even though. If I'm wrong in a certain area, once I hear the word of God and I believe it, immediately I'm going to correct myself. Immediately I'm going to repent over it, baby. But if you don't believe what your works is doing, your unbelief is bringing your unbelieving works to the judgment of God. Go ahead, my teacher, yes. And that right there, will keep you out of heaven the same way that Israel unbelief kept them out of the promised land. That's true. That's true. Let me explain something to you here, honey. It's not that God didn't have the power to bring them in the promised land. He brought Joshua in there, did he? In that generation. It's not that God couldn't brought Israel in the promised land. The ideal of it was he wouldn't do it because they didn't believe the one he signed. They didn't believe Moses. They didn't believe the teaching of God. They did what they wanted to do. They ignored Moses. Wasn't no godly sorrow. It wasn't no godly sorrow. Instead of them repenting, they talked about the man. Instead of them repenting, they justified themselves. You see what I'm talking about? There's no way, there's nothing at any time that the Spirit of God or the Word of God talked to me and I knew I was wrong. That I didn't repent or correct the situation. I have to show God, not tell God, I have to show God my faith when God showed their faith, not heard their faith. Do you see what I'm talking about? Let me explain something to all of you all. If any of you all is in unbelief, in him the prophet, in him the word of God, I advise you to get out of that unbelief you are in. The Bible said that all unbelievers have their part in the lake of fire. You see what I'm talking about? God destroyed all of them that didn't believe Moses to put that blood over their doorpost. He destroyed all the firstborn. Yes, Go ahead, now. This is why that whatever a man of God tells you, take that serious. I don't care how small it is, take it serious, baby. Don't let your man tell you, well, oh, that's not nothing. It was nothing too much when Moses told them, don't eat, don't, don't, don't go out there and gather manna on the Sabbath day. That didn't seem like it was too much. But under God, it was a lot. He destroyed them. It wasn't nothing too much of the prophet telling Saul, amen, to destroy everything 
It don't spare nothing. It didn't seem like it wasn't too much. It was enough for God to destroy Saul and bring him down. Anything that the prophet tells you, take it serious, baby. Put faith in it. Yes, yes. Yes, I do. Yes, see what I'm talking about. Go ahead, teacher. Because you don't want to show God that you hearing his prophet in unbelief. Even if the prophet uh, preach something or tell me something and I saw I didn't do right. I'm not going to judge whether God said this or not. I'm not taking chances like that. I'm going to correct the matter and repent. You see what I'm talking about? I'm not going to ignore this and walk away from it and let it sit because if you don't repent, that sin is still on you in record in heaven. That sin is still there until you repent and correct it. Prophet, suppose I repent. It's still there until you correct it. You see what I'm talking about? Amen. Now what you got to look at here, and this has been happening all through the Bible, all through generation, that God been sending prophets, apostles, with his word for you to profit. In other words, God is sending you his word and prophets for you to get better. But instead of some of us getting better, we getting worse up. God is sending you his word and his prophets for you to draw closer to him. But instead, you get further away. God is sending you his word and his prophets for you to stop doing what you're doing, but you're still doing it. So you can see right there that you is him the word in unbelief. What can happen there? You can stand before God and he will judge you as an unbeliever. You see what I'm talking about? Anytime that God is sending you his word and his prophets and you is getting worse instead of better, it's showing the word is not profiting you. And it's not that you didn't hear it. You heard it. You didn't believe it. You see what I'm talking about? When God spoke that Wednesday on my ways toward co-pastor, I, I, I knew what God was saying. I didn't ignore that. I went home and repent. I changed my ways. I correct the matter. So what did I show God? That I heard the word of God even though I spoke it. It came from God. I heard it in faith, baby. If I would have heard the word of God through me in unbelief, I wouldn't have repented. I wouldn't have corrected the matter. And I still would have had my ways. That's why a lot of y'all still got your way because you was an unbeliever. That's why you still doing the way the things you are doing because you was an unbeliever. And God swear that Israel would not enter in because of unbelief. This is what you got to be careful of. Not just you, anybody to go to church. You got to make sure that you not in church as an unbeliever. You got to make sure that you are not reading this Bible in unbelief. You got to make sure that you're not hearing the word of God through the prophet 
in unbelief. If you, if you accept what you read in faith, if you accept what you heard through the prophet in faith, you will see worse there. You will see yourself getting better. You will see yourself getting closer to God. You will see yourself correcting the matters. You will see your ways changing, baby, for the better. I don't argue no more with my wife. That's gone. No more attitude, baby. It's all a good man. It's always been a good man. It was just at my ways. I broke them, baby. The word of God I accepted delivered me. Because I accept the word of God by faith. I heard the word of God by faith. It wasn't no pastor on the TV was preaching. It wasn't no pastor on the radio was preaching. It's the same pastor preaching right now that I accept it. Now look at, now look at my marriage. No, no argument, no attitude, no funny ways, no shaky ways. No nothing, baby. That's gone. That's over. That's the past. It profited me. It profited my marriage. It brought me closer to God. Yes, it did, teacher. Go ahead. Now I know you're right. Let me explain something to you. People are supposed to see your profiting under the word. You're supposed to see yourself profiting. You're supposed to see yourself get more faithful. You're supposed to see yourself get more obedient. You're supposed to see yourself get more closer to God. You're supposed to see yourself get more better. Amen. I'm doing my job. Amen. I don't, I don't miss Bible class and not teach you. I'm doing my job. I'm here every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. I'm preaching what God tell me to preach. So if I'm doing my job, the problem is you. You is an unbeliever. You hear the word of God in unbelief. Do you see what I'm talking about? Anytime a man seem that he's not profiting under the word of God, it shows he's an unbelief nowhere. So his unbelief somewhere. They had nothing to do with the church. Don't let the devil put that lie on the church. We preaching holiness over here. We preaching nothing but the truth over here. Everybody on the TV know it, baby. The devil in hell know it. The devil never going to point fingers at you. The devil gonna keep you in darkness to yourself. The devil gonna keep you blinded to yourself cause he got you in unbelief. He gonna point fingers at the church. Oh, you're not growing under the ministry where the ministry is preaching it. Why are you not growing? You're not growing because you got unbelief in you somewhere. What you telling me, the reason why the Pharisees didn't get, get, get saved because Jesus wasn't preaching the truth? Well, that's what you telling me. Well, well, prophet, I'm not growing here. So you telling me that the Pharisees didn't get saved and wasn't growing because Jesus wasn't preaching the truth? Prophet, you ain't Jesus. I know I'm his servant. Speaking his word through me, baby. Yeah. Son by Jesus, baby. You see what I'm talking about? The devil not going to have them to look at themselves. I know you're right. The devil going to have them to point fingers at everybody else. Point fingers at the prophet. We're going to see who God going to point fingers at and judge. All right, set it. Let me explain something to you here, baby. I'm giving you all the tools to work with. I done preach everything that God told me to preach to you. I'm here every 
Cam Church opened up. That's not one day I took off un a, a, a necessary. I preach all day on Sunday. I'm here every Wednesday and Friday. I'm not preaching 15, 20 minutes. I'm not preaching a bunch of trash. I'm preaching sound doctrine. Now, if there's no spiritual growth or getting better behind all of this, the problem lies within you. You is in unbelief somewhere. If you go to another church, you're going to go to another church in the same way of unbelief. You see what I'm talking about? Person like that never get better. They, they, they running from something, looking for something else, but the problem is in them. Let me tell you what God is doing. God is sending you his word to deliver you. But many of us still bound. That shows the word of God not profiting in you. You see what I'm talking about? Amen. God is sending you his word that you will repent and correct the matter. But after you heard the word, you didn't repent. You didn't correct the matter. But you ignored God's prophet and ignored God's word. Why? Because the word is not profiting them because they heard what the prophet told them in unbelief. If that would have been in the word in faith, um, it have been works of repentance there. Do you see what I'm talking about? Let me explain something to you here, honey. When God sends us his word and we believe it, we get better. We see ourselves getting delivered. We see ourselves getting closer to God. We see the word of God profiting us. Do you see what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Amen. Uh, the problem is with many people, Jim, they hear the word with unbelief in them. This is why they're ignoring it. It's why they justify themselves. They don't believe it. Amen. Bottom line, these cans are unbelievers, but they only religious unbelievers. Amen. Unbelieving with God is unbelievable. They're in the church out. <laughs> Pharisees, hold it. Pharisees stayed in the church. Read in the book of Matthew. Jesus called them unbelievers. Yes, you see what I'm talking about? Amen. Let me tell you what an unbeliever will do. An unbeliever will hear the word of God and still won't change. After he heard the word of God. Unbeliever um, will hear the word of God. And after he heard the word of God, still won't, won't repent. Uh, Unbeliever um, will hear the word of God and will not get convicted because he have no conscience on that. And the reason why he have no conscience, he didn't believe what he just heard. The only way that you would have a conscience if you believe. Now, I'm going to tell you all this. There's a lot of people I pull away from counseling. If you notice, there's a lot of people I stop praying for because I see they're unbelievers. I'm not, Jesus Christ, what did Jesus say? He could do no mighty works there because of what? I did the same thing. You see what I'm talking about? Amen. I didn't come tell them they was an unbeliever. The word already done told them. 
Once I see that there is an unbeliever, mm -hmm. I have nothing to do with them. All right, go ahead now. Yeah. I can't do nothing. No. I can't help them. They got to help themselves. That is so, teacher. And they can only help themselves by getting out of unbelief. That's it. Putting faith in the word of God. I know you're right. Teacher. By putting faith in the word of God. Yes, yes. You're not going to tie me down and waste my time and I see you don't believe. Well, prophet, you don't know if I believe or not. Oh, you think I don't? If I done preached the word, I see if you done made a change. I see how you corrected. I, I could see it. Notice him. There are some people I refuse. I refuse. Because I see they got unbelief. Uh, feel as though I'm wasting my time with you. Feel as though I'm wasting my time. Instead of you keep wanting the prophet to pray for you, you better accept the word the prophet preaching. Because it's not prayer going to deliver you, it's the word. God sent his word and healed them. Now ye are clean through the word. Which I have what? Spoken to you. Do you see what I'm talking about? An unbeliever will ignore the word of God, still turn to prayer. And that's what the Pharisees did. They ignored Jesus' teaching but still made long prayers. Do you see what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah. Go ahead. This is why here, it's not that I got respect of a person. The ideal of it is I done labeled you as an unbeliever. And you gave me a reason to label you as an unbeliever. I call it as Jesus said, what I see, therefore I spoke it. You see what I'm talking about? Amen. Well, probably you judging wrong. I'm judging the tree that the fruit it bears. Jesus told me to do that. Yeah, you know what you're looking at. I know, I know what I'm looking at. Oh, yeah. You can't tell me it's not bananas when I'm looking at bananas. I'm not blind. All right. Go ahead, teacher. I know you're right. Do you see what I'm talking about? Amen. Now, you got to look at Jesus Christ and the Pharisees. Right. Amen. Jesus Christ, uh, after when Jesus saw that these men was in unbelief, he had too much to do with them. You yes, see what I'm talking about? When Jesus went to this city and saw the people in unbelief, he didn't waste his time to do no miracles there. You cannot waste your time with people that don't believe the word of God. I know you're right. You cannot waste your time with people that don't believe what you preach it. Oh, say that, teacher. I know you're right. Yes, see what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. You teach you because the word of God is not profiting them. And the reason why the word of God is not profiting them because they hear it in unbelief. Now, common sense to tell you, baby. If the word is not profiting you because you in an unbelief, how in the hell prayer going to profit you? Wait a minute. Hold it here. If the greater can profit you, how can the lesser profit you? If the word, which is the greater, it's not profiting you. How in the hell can prayer, which is the lesser, profit you? That's why I pulled back from a lot of folks. I told Deke one time I refused to talk to him. I refused to pray with him. Any time that I'm giving you the word of God and you justifying yourself, I wash my hands. You see what I'm talking about? 
until I see this person get rid of this unbelief. I can't, I'm not going to waste my time with somebody that's in unbelief and hearing the word. It's not profiting them. I know if the word is not profiting you, prayer certainly won't profit you. You're wasting your time. In other words, him, if you does not believe the teaching that the Holy Ghost is speaking through me. Whoever you get to pray for you, save it. Save your breath. God don't hear it. God don't hear the one that's praying for you neither. Because you is in unbelief. Prophet, I believe the prayer, baby, it ain't going to work with God. You got to believe his word first. You see what I'm talking about? Even when the satiric met Christ, he said, my servant lad at home sick at the point of death. He said, now, look, I'm a master. I'm, I'm one that tell one go and go and he go and one come and he come. He told Jesus, he said, look, he said, I'm not worried for you to go under my house and pray. He said, send the word and my servant shall be healed. You see what I'm talking about? You got people. I see it during the telecast. Even the folks on the TV. You got people who are called for prayer and won't pray, but won't put no faith in the word of God. I learned, baby, I got wise with people. I'm not going to waste my time with them until I see they're out of unbelief. Amen. Well, if they get out of unbelief, I won't need to pray for them no more. They'll be healed. They'll be delivered, baby. You see what I'm talking about? Everybody stand. Do you see what I'm talking about? Tell the devil he ain't going to rock on me. Got to do what I got to do, baby. You see what I'm talking about? When you speak on unbelief, you hidden Satan. Because he is the Godfather of unbelief. In whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them that believe not. That's what the word said. He the Godfather of unbelief. He would rather for them to run the prayer run for all than for them to run to the word of God. If I hadn't have put faith in the, look, I was praying three days, three times a day. The devil had my mind. The devil had me depressed. God came to me that Thursday night. He did not tell me to pray more. I was already praying. He told me to grab his word, put faith in it. Look at my man now, baby. Look at me now, baby. You see what I'm talking about? Ain't my man healthy? Do you see what I'm talking about? Look at me now. Look at my man. Look at me. I'm peaceful. I'm happy. I got a sound mind. Proud didn't do it. I was praying three times a day and it didn't do it. But when God came and told me to take the 20th Psalm, stand on it, believe it, that's where I chopped the devil down at. That's when I got delivered, baby. Look, let me explain something to all of you all. I got rid of all of my problems in life. Man, demons, and all through the word of God, through faith in the word of God. I did what God told me to do. I act on it. I showed God I believed it. Satan saw I believed it. I battled Satan many nights at three in the morning with the word. He don't want no part of me.
You don't want no part of me now, baby. Y'all can have your seat. You don't want no part of me now. I wonder why. Nothing he do can work on me. People got themselves in the shape that they in. People got themselves in the shape that they are in because they have no faith in the word of God. And if they don't have faith in the word of God, how can you put faith in prayer? God's not going to exalt prayer over his word. Come on, baby. You see what I'm talking about? God not going to do it. Amen. You got many people is reading this Bible in unbelief. They preaching this Bible in unbelief. Pharisees were preaching the word, read the Bible. But they were preaching it in unbelief. If you hear it in unbelief, you're going to preach it in unbelief. It ain't going to profit nobody. No, nobody, nobody. I know you're right. Why is it here the word is profit in me? Word done delivered me, I told you. Deliver my mind, deliver my ways, kept me in good health, ran the devil away. Why is it profit growing closer to God? God prophesying out of me. Why is the word profit in me? I believe it. I got faith in it. Not just saying that God see my work. Amen. See, with God, you can't say nothing. You got to show it to him. Yes, yeah. yeah. you what I'm talking about. Amen. I'm, 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 I mean, if you is an unbelief, what will happen here, you would pay it no attention. You would pay the word of God no attention what you read. You, you'll just be reading it but paying to no attention. You'll be sitting in Bible class half sleep because you ain't got no faith in it. Faith will keep you woke and alert. You see what I'm talking about? Faith will keep you responding to the word. Faith would have you come back with a testimony of results, baby, like I did. Prophet, yeah, that's I had to cut the testimony. Look at the testimony I just gave. Look at the testimony I've been given. Faith give you testimony. Give your response to the word. If you have used, if you have put faith in this word, and you got results. When I preach and give you my testimony, prophet, I know you're right. I know you're right. Prophet, can I testify? You see what I'm talking about? Go ahead now. Look at him. I have no problems in my life. No sickness in my body, nowhere. No marriage or problem. I'm not in no, not even an ounce of pain. Ain't been in pain in years. And I'm 62. Holy, I'm not through. I'm so close to God, he can carry me on the tour. I'm so close to God that he can, I'm just that close where he can put me on a chariot and show me my house. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Or putting faith in the word of God. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord God. That's close. Faith in the word of God delivered me from everything. Faith in the word of God. That's what Satan was trying with me. My faith in the word. That devil was testing. That devil came against my mind. When the devil come against your mind, 
He's testing your faith in the word of God. When the devil attacked your body with sickness, he's testing your faith in the word of God. You got to show the devil you believe God. You got to show God you believe him at his word, baby. You see what I'm talking about? Look how the devil attacked my body. He have did it many times in his pulpit. I showed the devil my faith in the word of God. Devil, I don't believe you. I'm going to keep on preaching. I did, baby. You see what I'm talking about? Yes, you did. Yes, yes. You think your faith in operation. All right. Satan saw my faith in operation. Why he can't do nothing now? My faith keeping them back. Yes. That's why the Bible said, uh, uh, take the shield of faith. Uh -huh. Do the devil try to give me spiritual warfare? He has. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Every now and then he checks in. Uh -huh. When he checks in, I checks out with faith with him. All right. Say that to you. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm solid. I'm rooted in the faith. Church, what man at 62 can tell anybody? And, 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 and this every time I come to church, mm -hmm. I have no pain, yes. I have no sickness, yes. no marital problem, no man problem. I'm just as peaceful. Yes. Yes. When, look, when I got back from New York last night, I slept nine hours. Came right back before I came to Bible class tonight. I slept from two to five, three more hours. Yeah. It's all good, teacher. I mean, I'm not on a restricted diet. No. I can eat anything. It don't hurt my stomach. It don't run up my blood pressure. I don't have high blood pressure. It don't run up my sugar. It don't, um, it don't give me a toothache. I can eat anything I want. Amen. You bring it, I, long as food, I can eat it. I mean, you know, I mean, I mean I'm saying. I could drink anything, long as beverage is not nothing alcohol. Simply because it's not that Satan gave me this freedom. And the idea here, my faith. In the word of God, is keeping him back. I've been taught by one of God's best, by the man right here. Through the Holy Ghost, baby. And look, the word of God taught my fingers to fight and my hands to war. The word of God done taught me how to duck and how to swing and when to swing. I have no problems in that. Look, read my lips. I don't have not one problem in life. Not one. There's nothing. If I need to pray over something, there's nothing for me to pray over. All I can do is thank God for what he brought me from, what he's doing to keep me. That's nothing. I don't have no finance problem. Anytime a man can jump on the plane, anytime he get ready. And he said his son and did it uh, and booked it Sunday night. I didn't know I was going out of town when I told y'all this Sunday. Right. Amen. I got tested through the words I spoke at church, but I proved it. I went. You see what I'm talking about? I don't have no marital problem. Me and my wife don't have attitudes. We don't argue. We don't disagree. Anytime you got a disagreement in your marriage, it's a demon somewhere. You need to find that demon, baby. It's a demon somewhere. Only demons divide marriages. Only demons. There's a problem in your marriage or in your home. There's a demon somewhere. You need to find, you can easily find the demon. The one that always finds fault, that's the demon. That's the demon that's possessed. 
I'm going to have the need to start preaching on demon possession. There's a lot of these folk that's living in your house that you are married to, they are demon possessed. That's why, that's another reason why they don't believe the word of God. They demon possessed. If they are demon possessed, they will not believe the word of God. If you got a spouse always arguing, always a husband, always arguing, always fussing, Nothing going right, chances are they possess. Prophet, how do you know they possess? I'll tell you why. God is an act of peace. God is, a, God is love. Demons are the ones that divide. That bring discord, that bring accusation. Look at the devil that accused Jesus. What was that? That was God or Satan. Okay. That person is demon possessed. If they demon possess, they not gonna hear what I preach. If they demon possess, they're gonna be unbelievers and hear the word. If they demon possessed, they're going to try to cover it up. Mm -hmm. Go ahead now. By coming to church, counseling, or will you pray for me? Mm -hmm. All right. Look at the spirit. Yeah. All right. Demons are very tricky. I know how to say, I know I know. Them. Look, baby, you're dealing with a senior here. You dealing, this is not a new convert. I've been reading this Bible and walking with God for, for 36 years. I've been walking with God longer than some of y'all been born. You weren't even born when I got saved. I know. Yes, you, so I, 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 I know. Yes, see what I'm talking about. Amen. Some of and you can tell when persons demon possessed by the way they act. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Through their conduct, through their split personality. They can't look at you. They gotta hide. Play sleep. They ain't sleep. That's where demons act like that, because they can't face you. They can't face the truth. Play like they're doing something else. Fooling with the prophet, I'm trying to record you. Devil, you don't want to hear from me. Oh. Y'all see what I'm talking about? But it's a reason why these peoples are in unbelief. Lots of these people's unbelief because they're demon possessed. Yeah. You yeah, see what I'm talking about? And it could have been demon possessed a long time. Don't you see what I'm talking about? Well, prophet, why don't you have a prayer line and cast the demons out? I'm not going to do it. If the word don't do it, I'm not going to trust the devil. I'm going to learn some sense, baby. I'm not, yes, I did. I'm not going to tie myself out. I'm going to save all of my energy for the word of God, for the TV, and them that want to hear the truth. I'm not going to let the devil burn me out like that. And when you get through praying for them, they still in unbelief. The word delivered me. You see what I'm talking about? I'm not going, I'm not going to do it. They would keep the devil in them till they die. If the word don't do it, I'm not going to touch him. The Bible says if he filthy, let him stay filthy. If he unclean, let him stay unclean. That's it. Look, if they don't accept the word of God, they won't accept my counseling. God is greater than I am. His word is higher than I am. If they didn't accept the highest, which is God's word, how can they accept the lowest, which is me? That's a man of wisdom. I learned. Smart, baby. 
They ain't going to tie me out. And I know you got demons in you. You ain't going to tie me out. I know you're in unbelief. You have to keep what you got. Until you decide you want to get saved. You see what I'm talking about? Hey Amen. I'm not going to touch that. You got many people in this whole world. You got many people in this world coming to church faithful as an unbeliever. Faithful as an unbeliever. Pharisees came to church faithful as an unbeliever. But let me explain something according to the Bible here. Now a lot of these scriptures we're going to go off into. Unbelievers will receive the hardest judgment from God than a murderer, than a rapist. Unbelievers is going to receive the hardest judgment. If you look at what Jesus, now all you got to do is read the Bible. Look what Jesus said to the Pharisees. Now what I want to show the church, church, listen to me. I'm your pastor. I'm going to tell you the truth. Now, when you look at the Pharisees, they went in no adultery. They condemned the woman that was. There was no murder. They never killed nobody. They crucified. They agreed, they agreed to crucify Christ, but they got somebody else to do it. They got the Romans to do it. Uh, yeah, they went in none of that. But Jesus Christ knew that they was in unbelief. You know what he told them? He said, the hardest and the whole must go in before you. He said, you're going to receive the hardest judgment from God because you don't believe. Now, let me say this here. Unbelievers, I don't want to touch their fruit. I'm going to tell you that now. If they do, have to be real quick with it. I don't want it. I don't want it. Because I know where they went. I know where they'll be at. I know the judgment is harsh. You see what I'm talking about? Unbelievers are so bad with God, they told us that I saved to come out from a month. Don't have no company with them. Why would the Bible tell them to come out from unbelievers? That's an abomination to God. You see what I'm talking about? God say have nothing to do with them. Don't even marry an unbeliever. Because all unbelievers going to do is stand fault. All unbelievers going to do, and the word of God told them to straight up, they're going to keep ignoring it. Don't even marry them kind of folk. Don't even hang with unbelievers. Even the Paul said, what, I mean, what do unbelievers have something to do with them in the faith? I studied this Bible. According to the Bible, I would rather be a murderer, a rapist, than to be an unbeliever. Although I wouldn't be neither one of those. Sin is sin under God, but unbelief is the greatest sin. But, I mean, look. I, going to hell is worse than enough. But to go further down into hell because I'm an unbeliever is bad, it's, it's bad, it's, it's too bad. Now, I'm not just going to tell y'all about this unbeliever that's the heart of judgment. I'm going to bring it out in the word of God. I'm going to let the word tell you. Now, whether you got faith in it or not, I got to tell you. Now, what I want y'all to see is this here. Even with Israel and the, uh, and the heathens. Now, if you notice him, the heathen served the idol gods. The heathen committed murder. The heathen committed all kind of sex acts. God prevailed no judgment on. Why did God open up the ground on his own people? Because there's an unbelief. Unbelief was the greatest. 
Now, to show you here, and the reason why God looks at this, because a sinner is more quicker to come out of unbelief than a lot of these church folks. Now, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I'm, this is why Jesus said the harlots and the homemongers would go in before y'all Pharisees. This is why Jesus said the men of Nineveh is going to rise up and condemn the generation because Nineveh was a Gentile that accepted the word of God from the prophet and repented. Oh, yes, they did. If you look at the Gentile, Nineveh, Nineveh was not God's chosen people. They were Gentiles. God did not bring Nineveh out of Egypt. He brought Israel out. Nineveh was a Gentile country, but yet, they believed it. They believed in God prophet and repented and correct the matter. God own peoples. Some of them Pharisees sit right there under Christ and heard the word. Didn't repent. Didn't correct the matter. This is why he told them, you're going to receive the greater damnation. He said, you are there to justify yourself before men, but God knows you. So this is why that I warned my church not to hear the word of God in unbelief. Let me explain something to all of you. Ex putting faith in the word of God can help everything in your life. If you got faith in the word of God, you don't have to pray for God to do nothing. The word will do it all with your faith in it. All right, let me go back here. Church, I stand before God. I was praying night and day over my man. The devil still had it. I was praying, I would be, I prayed, I prayed so much, my, all my whole shirt would be sweat. I pray all them, my wife would get me up in the middle of the night and go pray. Still had the demons in my mind. But God knew what I needed. Like God know what you need to get delivered. God told me to put faith in his word like the prophet is telling you to put faith in God's word. Once I put faith in God's word, You can't come to me and tell me about your problem when I'm giving you the word and you ain't got no faith in it. Don't come tell me you saw a man in your house. When I'm giving you faith, telling you about the word of God, putting faith in it, and you want to keep, keep believing what you see. Baby, I'm not going to waste my time with you. Amen. I'm going to tell you, okay, the man you see in your house, marry him. <laughs> I mean, you going, I mean, is this what I'm saying? The, the, the word I'm preaching can't profit thee. I'm not getting nowhere. Let me explain. In this type of field that I'm doing unto God, I got to use knowledge. I'm a man, I'm only flushing blood. I'm 62 years old. If, I'm, if I don't watch myself, I can get woe down. I can get tired. I can get tired out to where I cannot fulfill my complete task in God. So, I got to walk wise. Hey, hey, you're doing it, you're doing it. I admire you for that, yeah. You admire me for it? Let me explain something to you. Satan can't, if Satan know him that I'm using faith in the word of God 
And he can't stop me with sickness or nothing else from preaching God's word. His next step is to tire me out. The word I can't read, the word I can't study, where I can't preach. I have to be careful. And he will use you to do it. He would have me, he, he would have me keep taking a lot of time with you and you don't believe nothing I'm preaching. He would have you to keep telling me to pray for you. You ain't got no faith in the word trying to tire me out. So I got to use common sense here. I have to use knowledge here. I have to give you the word of God. And that's it. Yeah, I'm 62 now. I'm not 18. I understand I'm a man of God. The Holy Ghost is in me. But this is flesh and blood here. Amen. I, 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 even though I'm a prophet of God, he made me the same way he made you from the dust of the ground. Amen. I got kidneys like you got kidneys. I got a heart like you got a heart. I get tired like you get tired. You go to sleep at night, I do too. You go to the white room, so does I. You eat, I eat, eat. You shoot up, you got hands, I got them. You got legs, I got them. You got five toes, me too. I mean, I got blood. You cut me, I got blood. But the thing of it is, I got to preserve myself unto the use of God. And the only way here that I can preserve myself for the use of God, I have to walk wise. Look, we got another telecast coming up in the next less than two weeks. Seven days on the TV. I have to, I have to keep my body and I preserved it for the ministry of Jesus Christ. If not, Satan can use any of you all to try to tire me out knowing you don't believe no way. You see what I'm talking about? Well, probably what you said, you don't pray with folk no more, counsel folk no more. I didn't say that. I say I'm not going to waste my time with unbelievers. I want you to hear it right now. Now, if you got faith in the word of God and you won't counsel over something, I would counsel you. I would pray with you. But if I see you in unbelief, baby, let me explain something to you, baby. My body is precious. My body is precious, baby. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I preserve myself. I got to preserve myself for God in the spirit. I got to have strength to preach this Bible. I got to have strength to stay up here for three and four hours on Sunday. I got to have strength to preach two telecasts. I have to have strength to preach the voice of the prophet. I got to have strength in my body to get up here on Wednesday and Friday and teach for two hours. I mean, yeah, dealing with, yeah. If I get tired, I can't do too much in God. Not at all. Not at all, my teacher. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah. If I get um, tied out, overexhausted, there's nothing. That means the one that does have faith in the word and those that's coming out to hear the word, I won't be able to feed them properly because I'll be too tired and wore out. And I'm sure y'all that's for real in God in the faith, you don't want that. Look. You want to preserve your prophet long as God can use the man. Because Paul said for me to be here for your good. You see what I'm talking about? You does not want your prophet to go in the hospital and be there for a month. And then come out, have to be on bed rest for another month. You want your prophet to be reserved in. You see what I'm talking about? Amen. Whether y'all know it or not, 
You won't miss me until I'm gone. You need this kind of teaching that I'm preaching, baby. If I don't preach it, Satan going to get you. You need this kind of teaching, baby. But in order to keep this kind of teaching, you got to preserve your profit. Stop letting these folks come in the office upsetting your profit. No more. Because they, they, you know, they, I don't, I don't know what's what the, they about. No. Yeah. I know what you know, okay. I don't, they, 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 they fast, they, you, you know, and they, they won't, they did yeah. They did and, and they come in there and they want to upset the prophet yeah. that's taking energy out of him. Yeah, that's the devil. Yeah, that's the devil. You want to preserve the man of God. Yeah. It will be. You don't want him to get tied out and God can't use the man. Sometimes you go to, okay, sister, okay, I heard you made my prophet angry. The next time you do it, you got to deal with me. Go ahead, teacher. Yeah. Because I don't know about you. You may not want the teaching. I need what the man teaches. You see what I'm talking about? Okay, sister, you've been in there too long. Now, to take all of that, where's the word coming in there? All right. You know what, <laughs> You see what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Well, we come in. You don't talk to the prophet two hours. The man that you went to I have to preserve my energy for God. Then I have to have energy for co pastor. Co pastor won't mean I'm all beat out, I'm all tied out. Baby, it takes energy. Hey, Amen. When you with your wife, you burning energy. I mean, you, brother, y'all know it. Look, yeah, because know when it's over with, you, you, you. Look how you feel. Yeah, you ready? Yeah. Understand. Y'all, y'all know it takes energy. Yeah. I mean, I won't be no good for for for, for, for God. I won't be no good for co-pastor. This is why I, that I have to preserve my energy, especially now that I'm 62. Now, I understand I feel like I'm in my 20s, but the body would knock on the door every now and then and say, you 62, brother. Now, I understand you got all of this zeal for God and all of this lust for co-pastor, but, but look, but when I break, that's it. That's what I'm saying. Amen. Body will shut down. It, it, look, I have seen that. I have seen that. I had to regroup myself and use wisdom, baby. Yeah. That is so true. I mean, if you take the energy out from me for God, you going to preach by me? If you take the energy out from me toward cold pastor, you going to take my place? Not at all. <laughs> Can't nobody take your place. Preaching in with me. Nobody can take your place. You see that? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. She don't want that. Mm, not at all. I'm not going to have that. You got to keep, you got, look, yeah. your pastor's getting older. Yeah, yeah. And his body is deteriorating. Mm -hmm. You got to help preserve the man yeah, of God. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Because the devil wait for me to die. Mm -hmm. He got you in mind. Mm -hmm. He got you, he got all of y'all, got your marriages in mind. He, he wait until I die. He figured he's going to make you backslide after I die. So this is why Paul told the church, for me to be here is needful for you. And it is. And it is By the prophet being here and being around, it kept you on your God. Yeah, yeah. It kept you striving for God. It kept you in the right direction with God. You don't want to smite the shepherd and the sheep go to stray. You, you want to preserve. Yo, pastor, now let me tell y'all this, and I'm through for tonight. Let me say this, him. 
uh, y'all could lose me if I'm not wise enough. I'm not saying lose me as far as death. You can lose me where I can't operate in God. Where sickness start coming in my body, start breaking down, too weak, too tired, amen, and all that stuff. You want to preserve, man. You got to look at it. My pastor's getting older. He's not in his 30s now. He's not in his 40s. He's not in his 50s. He's in his 60s. The man would be 70 in less than eight years. I have to reserve him. I need that God keep speaking through him. We don't know what God going to do after God called me home. You don't know if God going to raise up another one. Say that again. I ain't taking no chance. So you want God uh, to keep your pastor around. You want to preserve your pastor. You don't want nobody coming in there, you know, taking the energy out of your pastor, yeah. arguing, amen, taking up all his time over nothing, upsetting yeah. him, yeah. all that type of stuff. I'm too angry to get angry. I'm too old to get angry. Yeah. Anger takes energy out of you too because you raise your voice. Yeah. I can come up with a heart attack. And you'd be the calling you, uh, uh, devil, you need to, you'd be the calling you killing your pastor. This is why you got to preserve your pastor. God gave your pastor to you. God gave your pastor to you for your good, that you'll benefit, that you'll grow. But you got to watch out for Satan. Satan know the man is flesh and blood. And he will use you to make him angry. He will use you to try to take away his energy. Where he can't function in God because the devil knows. If I got my energy, I'm going to preach. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand. I'm going to preach for God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to perform what God helped me to perform. But if the devil take my energy because of something I allow, I'm not wise for even though I want to preach, I can't. I went through that. We're going to dismiss. Let me say something. Y'all remember the time when I lost all my energy? I don't know right today what happened. I couldn't even preach. Remember I had to have some of y'all do the voice of the prophet? I can only do the telecast sitting down. I fought so hard. Even in Bible class, I had to sit down. I was fighting, church. I had no energy. I wanted to. But I had no energy. But I fought it. Even doing the voice of the prophet, because I, I would rather the preach the telecast. I'd rather reach the telecast and you all than to do the voice of the prophet and just reach you all. So I had to preserve my energy, and I had to get certain people to come up there and preach. And I just sit back, and I just, I used to hate it. I know how it is. So I have to walk wise. This is why I have to select who to, who to deal with and who not, who to pray with and who not, and who to spend a lot of time with and who not. I'm getting older. I'm 62. You got to be spiritual minded even with your prophet. You got to be spiritual minded of folk that's talking to them. You got to be spiritual minded of people that's making them upset. Sometimes you can step in and okay, so that's enough now. You may not need the man of God, I do. I want you to shut your mouth up and, and get out of his face. You're going to have to rebuke her or him or whatever. You see what I'm talking about? That's what I'm saying. It wasn't but one Paul. It wasn't but one Peter. God ain't told y'all nothing if he take the prophet. Mm. 
So you, go, you should help the man of God. You got to look at my pastor's getting older. Yeah, yeah. I can't let these folk keep upsetting him. I can't, even you got to tell yourself, I can't let the devil keep making, make I can't keep letting the devil use me to upset my pastor. He getting older. Mm -hmm. you, you, you have to look at these things. Go ahead, teacher. Because see here, the devil understand here. Say, we're going to dismiss. The devil knows. Even though I got a zeal for God, the priest holding it, he know I will. My body is separate. Mm -hmm. He know if I get tired out, mm -hmm. he know I can't do it. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's why every day it's God to give me the energy, give me the strength. Before I come to church, I get on my knees and I tell God, mm -hmm. God, long as I can do your will, God, give me the energy and the strength. Yeah. You gave me the life. I need the energy to go with it, mm -hmm. to do your will. Yeah. He have done that. Yes, he has. But, you, but I have to watch out for Satan. Mm -hmm. He will take that energy out of me. Energy yeah, I got to make sure Copal to give me a good meal. Yeah, yeah. To give me energy. I'm getting older. Yeah. My body's not functioning the way it did mm -hmm. when I was in my 20s and 30s. Mm -hmm. That's true. Certain foods I have to eat. Certain foods will make me tired out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your body go through changes as you get as older. You get older. But as I get older, I got to use wisdom That's it. in order to keep the ministry going, the teaching going. If not, the candle can go out. Remember, God bless you. All right, WYCA Channel 62.